Hello, Loose TV. We have Christian Gladwell here, CEO of um, Human Digital, also LSC alumni. Um, Christian, firstly, tell us about your um, this company that you found, Human Digital. What exactly is it all about, and how did the LSC help you um, bring your idea into success? We set up Human Digital uh, in 2007 because we firmly believe that the opportunity uh, for organisations, whether they're governmental organisations, whether they're brands, whether they're you know, whomever, the United Nations, etc., um, is as a new way to understand audiences, to understand people. Because if we can understand people, the motives, the drivers, the emotions, the, the need states behind them, um, then, we can, um, then we can offer our services uh, in a more timely fashion, in a more relevant fashion, at a more relevant price point. And it's interesting from a business perspective because it can take us in directions that we never thought possible. And history is littered with experience of, of, of kind of doing that. We've just got a new way of doing it, a more cost-effective, more robust way of doing it. Um, so we are different from other people in the sense that we see social media and digital as a behaviour rather than as an engagement channel or a set of channels. Um, so if we think that mass participation in social platforms is a lens by which we can see people, then we need a research methodology to be able to understand that data. And when we talk about data, we are talking about human conversation. So instead of attempting to build software, and my background is uh, banking, so uh, I used to build, <laughs> I used to build uh, synthetic structures over, uh, uh, over uh, certain kind of fixed markets, uh, foreign exchange uh, and precious metals. Um, the point is that if we um, uh, if we want to um, if we want to understand uh, uh, people, then we can't really do that by building software. The notion that we can build software that accurately models human behaviour is fundamentally bankrupt at the moment. Google are on record as saying they are 10, 15 years away from any meaningful sentiment analysis, and sentiment analysis is one small part, very important part, but one small part in modelling behaviour. So what we did, and the answer to your question, I appreciate it quite a lot, <laughs> but in answer to your question, where does the LSE come? We looked around for who was really pushing this academically, and we came up with two schools, one of which is the LSE, the other one is MIT. We have very, very strong links with the LSE. We fund a number of programs there and work closely with uh, Dr. Alan Helsper, who's one of the leading lights on exactly this, the human analysis of online conversation. Right, that's a... Very insightful answer to the question. Um, you actually just mean long then. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, so what I understand is that you essentially link the consumer and the producer um, so that there's a, no mismatch of information in both sides. Exactly that. So linking audience with organisation, right. whatever that means. Now that might have a commercial effect, but if you're the United Nations who are one of our clients, it's not obviously not a commercial effect. Exactly. It's about communicating the Millennium Goals for the um, uh, United Nations development. But is that, is that part of media consultancy or is, does your whole work come under the domain of media consultancy? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. I mean, um, w what are we? Essentially, we are a social media research and insight agency, but there's like three of us in the world. Um, and if you, I mean, if you Google social media agency, you will get 450,000 um, uh, um, uh, 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 results right. back because there, there's a need for that because people view social media as an engagement tool so I need an agency to do that engagement running Facebook page or whatever. Right. Google social media research you get about 25 results back it doesn't exist as a business at, at, at the moment or as an industry it's hard so it, the, the onus is on us and we've been doing this for a number of years now and the onus is on us to educate people so is it a media consultancy no I don't believe so I believe it's research I believe we, we, and that's why we, we are so keen and so committed to working with people like Ellen, um, who is at the forefront of pushing methodology. That's very interesting. It's a very different kind of research that I'm hearing about. It's obviously, since it is very rare, it's just one of the three companies that you're running who does this kind of research. I'd be very interested in finding a bit more about an example, for instance, like with one company you've worked with recently, and I'm aware that you've been very involved with the luxury and consumer mm -hmm. uh, sector. So are there any examples in recent history of any clients you've had? Yeah, I mean, th there are. Um, a lot of what we do with clients is, is confidential, but one I, I feel confident of, of, of sharing is with, is with Levi's. So we're working with Levi's on a, on a, global, um, uh, on a global basis. Um, so the business problem that they have is, um, I think it's common knowledge within their kind of industry sector, that. that they are, they are the company who invented jeans. Levi Strauss invented jeans. 
Um, yet their market share within women's jeans in the UK is less than 1%. So less than 1% of women's jeans sold in the UK are Levi's, which is astonishing. Yeah. So, and, and that is replicated around the world in their key markets in the United States, the United Kingdom, France, India, and, and um, Japan. So that's the business problem, right? From a commercial, hard-nosed, horrible kind of uh, outset, how do we sell more jeans? The more interesting one is, you know, Becky Van Dyke, the chief marketing officer, has 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 pulled a lot of the uh, pulled a lot of the the, the the kind of execution staff and strategy back uh, to to San Francisco at a global level, um, and the creative that they have put out, quite rightly, with a great agency called Martin Kennedy out of San Francisco, is pioneering. So the whole notion is that Levi's jeans is about pioneering. The execution of that is in the global um, campaign uh, or initiative called Go Forth. What we form part of that, we're running something underneath um, called Shape What's to Come, which ostensibly is a corporate social responsibility program. And we were able to understand by deep diving using our research in their core markets, United States, India, mm -hmm. Japan, etc., yeah. understand the issues that were important to women. Nothing to do with jeans at all. What are the issues that are important to women that they are offering up, that they are that they are talking about in these various um, uh, online communities. And we, we were able, through this process of, 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 of marrowing things down using a methodology, to come up with the notion that it was, or to statistic, statistically show that it was about mentoring. Issues that could be put, academically put under the bucket, under the heading, mentoring. And that's not mentoring in a kind of traditional, you know, you have a new job, here is your mentor, or, you know. But it's a much more holistic notion of mentoring. And the really interesting thing was to see how that notion changed from Delhi to Delaware to Deptford to, 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 to Japan. Now, that means that so now Levi's have an online community, which is essentially a, you know, think of it as a mentoring da data site. But what that looks like in terms of the user journey, user experience, the content feeds, completely different if you are accessing if a 24 year old woman accessing that in Delhi or a you know 18 year old jewelry designer in Catford in, 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 in London it's completely different so that is a live example of being able to understand communities being able to understand the cultural differences technical differences cultural differences and then being able to play a part so Levi's now have a community which helps women so they're caught instead of corporate social responsibility being we sponsor this charity it actually is something that is useful and then, then and obviously what is the what is the aim that it becomes useful for women in their key markets which therefore has an effect on the net promoter score brand health metric which then leads to women buying more of their that's very interesting um, but has there been any uh, foreseeable changes yeah i mean you know you, we can see that kicking the net promoter score absolutely because there are so many variables at play it yeah. is very very hard we, we can absolutely show it kicking the net promoter score it's very hard to show that kicking sales. That is why when we talk about return on investment, we run regression analysis, which is a multivariant regression analysis. It's why we fund a PhD at the information system <laughs> side as well, because sadly that's not a uh, uh, that's not a, a particular skill that, that that's taught on the on the media communications course. But we have to run multivariant uh, regression analysis in order to kind of you know um, uh, uh, yeah. understand, really define which variants are are, are, are kicking the, the the metric that we really care about. And just to add up to that for our viewers, um, Human Digital has been involved with uh, working and helping Microsoft, Sega, and Colgate, and even the BBC. So there's a variety of um, people that uh, that you guys have helped. Um, what what uh, sort of skills are you looking for in graduates which you're recruiting? Are you only looking for those um, sort of quantitative regression analysts, or are you looking for students who come from um, more, uh, more of a background of the social sciences? It's a great question. So typically you need three things to join us. You need a bright mind, which can be demonstrated by a commitment to kind of academic, um, 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 uh, to academia. Um, attention to detail, uh, and you need to want to change the world. Um, and they're the three things that you need for us to pick up. But how do you test that? Uh, it's a great question. Um, we bluntly ask you in interviews, <laughs> if I'm honest. Um, but we have quite a kind of experienced um, uh, interview team. Um, we are a very flat company, so when you come to work for us, everyone in the company will interview you. Uh, there's 15 of us, so you'll, everyone will interview you. We'll, one will then 
poll, we'll sit with you, we offer uh, internships, which are a, the most common route is that people from you know, the London School of Economics or MIT will do, will do um, uh, interns with us, um, and then you know, if they mustered or if they'd like to or whatever, then... then, then so some internships are open to undergraduates? Definitely. Right yeah, we run a rolling kind of internship program. From what I can tell, you are extracting all your research data from social media websites, mm -hmm. for example, is it Facebook mm -hmm. or Twitter? Mm -hmm. yeah, um, forums, blogs, blogs. e-commerce sites, review sites, okay. aggregator sites, home pages, mm -hmm. wikis. So, in that respect, would you not say that you, your company might face difficulties in terms of privacy rights of certain individuals that their comments cannot be seen or whatever they're posting is not visible to you. But, but do you feel that a huge portion of the market is being lost out to your company because of such restrictions? Yeah, look, it's, it's a really good question. I mean, the fundamental fact is if someone on Facebook clicks their privacy settings, no one can see that, and quite rightly so, right? Quite rightly so, that's fine. Um, Yes, undeniably you are missing out on some, but yet the numbers still add up. I mean, for example, when YouGov um, um, produce a piece of research, they put their online poll, and they online poll a thousand people, so they pay for the time of a thousand people who they have recruited you know, um, in, in, in line with the demographic sector they've been asked to look at. Given the, um, uh, the data processing capability that we have and the human application of certain sources of information, Google, the Google Suite, Bing, whatever, Facebook, etc., etc. Um, we can we end up narrowing that down to um, a sample set between twelve and sixteen thousand. So statistically speaking, that's a good sample. Size. That is a decent sample size, right? Thank you very much for your time. That was a splendid much. interview with <laughs> different, a different, wide range of experiences and advice. I'm sure our viewers will love it. Yeah. yeah.